Hi, I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils, and today we are going to show you how to use sawdust in your paint to make a really cool background and all the tricks for doing it. All right, today we are going to paint with sawdust, so let me show you how we're going to get that done. I'm going to mix a kind of complex color. I wanted this very kind of old looking color. It's bright, but not too bright. And then I'm going to do a little bit of stuff on top of it to distress it. I'm using equal parts number six and number 57. They're both in that kind of tealy turquoisey color family, but I didn't like it all this way and I didn't like it all this way. So making a little family out of them. So I'm going to mix equal parts and I'm making a big pile so that I have enough to do the sawdust. It's a lot of texture and stuff. So I'm going to make just this big pile of the paint and then about two thirds the size of those two piles. So those were say, we'll call it silver dollars. So two silver dollars of number six and number 57, and then maybe a half dollar size of number 22. And so I'll just scoop that and drag it in since I've already mixed it. I know that I want that. What this is doing for me, it is, is lightening up my color just a little bit and making it not too dark. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit more, so maybe equal. So silver dollar, silver dollar, silver dollar. Okay, and keep it on your palette sheet. And then I'm gonna drag in some black because now what that's doing for me is making it into a neutral or a gray tone. So it's mixing and kind of dragging down the intensity of the color. So that is why I'm doing these colors. And so anytime that you don't have a bottle of paint, just start with the little piles of paint. Keep an idea of what your measurements were so you can redo it once you like what you've got. I'm gonna pat just a little bit more of the black. So see that just kind of brought that intensity down, the vibrancy down. Okay, and now we get out our sawdust. Um, you can purchase sawdust. This is in the spinet line, and I think I got this from um, I don't think it was Hobby Lobby. I think it was either Joann's or something like that. But I know that this is a nationwide thing that they've taken out. Um, and this is just sawdust that you can put on the spinet products. So you can actually purchase this if you don't know anybody that has um, a wood shop. Uh, my husband happens to have a wood shop. So I'm going to take my sawdust and I'm just going to put a handful of it in there. Put that off to the side. And then we're going to mix that up. And you notice that my board is already pre-turquoised or tealed. Okay, and that looks like a good pile. I want the colors to be all saturated in that sawdust. And wipe off our palette knife. I always use an offset palette knife because you don't make as big a mess with it. So it keeps your fingers out of the fray of the of your surface your palette we're going to take this giant china duster stippler these are super duper affordable brushes they're what we might call cheap brushes they are pretty darn well made every now and again they'll lose some hairs but not very bad and um, they last and last and last they're an awesome brush you can make snow with them pick up and do your sawdust texture they're really universal brushes so i'm going to scoop this, I might have to mix a little bit more paint and make that thinner. Maybe I can put some water. Let me try water. Because I've pre-based, that means that I can, I don't have to color my surface. Yeah, that's working pretty good. Be much easier to scoop up. So less sawdust. When we're here in Studio R12, we try to make sure that we show everything that isn't perfect so that if you make a mistake, then you know how to fix it too. Just like we make mistakes every single day. Painting is all about like pivoting from those like, oops, happy accidents. I'm gonna wipe that heavy off of my brush. I'm gonna pick up the lighter and so that's on there. And then we're gonna go on here and we're going to spread that sawdust love around. You can make it as thick and heavy as you want. It can be even or uneven, whatever. Ooh, hi. Huh. It's 
it's gonna be one of those days. So I'll slide that around. The paint is gonna be the glue that keeps the sawdust on the project. This makes the neatest antique looking um, surface. You're gonna love this technique. Come on, you little guy. Scooch it around, just push it with your brush. If you get any bristles on there, I'm being kind of mean to my brush right now. If you get any bristles, just pick them off after you dry. You're gonna spend a lot of time getting your lumps where you want them, so you don't wanna disturb them until they've all cured. Oh, it's a happy day when you can make a big mess in sawdust and paint. So by pre-priming our board with our color, we didn't need to worry about this sawdust effect covering every inch and pigmenting the surface. So that's the best order for that to go in. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the board and make sure that I feel like I have even texture and shuffle things around. I can also knock this back when I get done um, just by sanding and picking at it before I start stenciling on top. Okay, that will do. Make sure you wash your brush out really good and um, get all that sawdust out of there. All right, guys, we finally have our sawdust dry. It was so much paint and so much sawdust. I went ahead, I put my brushes down, left for the day. So came back and here we are, it's nice and dry, my board's flat, everything is good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some of the um, texture leveled out just a little bit. So we use our 60 grit sandpaper on our sanding block. And anywhere where you've got a hair that kind of got loose on you, you can just give it a little light sand to loosen it up and then brush it away. So um, what you're gonna do, is do some crunchy sanding. All right, my goal here is not to level the, the texture out, it's just to take the really high pointy bits off so that you don't stab yourself. Um, and then knock off the stuff, find yourself a mop brush or tool and brush off debris. Okay, and then I wanna look at my texture and see I've got one big blob right here. And thankfully it's not going to be right in the middle of the bunny's body. Um, you wanna kind of look at your texture as a, like, do I really want that right there? And I don't like this one right in the middle of his head. So I'll knock that back. Okay, feel like that's better. And let's stencil. So when you're stenciling, um, you always want to secure your stencil um, in two places. If you're doing something really small and really quick and really easy and just not a lot of detail, you don't have to. But um, we always want to secure when we're doing something that has multiple parts. So I'll tape around the edge here. Make sure I'm lined up and then tape over here as well. Okay, we're gonna choose two colors. We're gonna do white and black. That's number 27, I believe. Is that 27 or 28? Black. 28 is black. And number, oh, white. Number 27. I think I'm gonna mix 27 and 22 together just to get just a little bit of a distressed look. Okay, get a palette knife. I 
It's about 50-50. We'll take a dry dome brush. So you want your dome brush to be dry. You want it to be domed. This is how you're not gonna bleed under. And then you want your paint to be dry, so don't get wet paint. If you have paint that's really thin, there's a couple brands that are at the craft store. Um, I'm not gonna name names just to not bash people, but um, Folk Art is a good brand. Um, Deco Art Americana is a great brand. Um, I've been using those forever. Um, and then we're using these um, honey bottles filled with Sherwin-Williams paint. And we've got a um, color matchy thing that's on our website that we can link to. And so that you can see like and follow along with the colors as we go. Okay, so we're gonna pick up dry paint on our dry brush and we're going to offload about five to 10 times. And then I'm gonna stipple on this because the bunny is textured underneath. And stencils is a layers game, so you wanna make sure that you're working in layers. Okay, and if your texture makes your brush lose some hairs, just brush them away. And it's a really common thing when you have a really textured background. It just works the hairs right on out. The hairs. <laughs> When you're stenciling on a big open hole like this, usually I would use a jumbo dauber, but because of the texture, the jumbo dauber, I don't think would get into the, the textured place without a lot of pressure. So we're just gonna end up just making a couple of passes at this. Once again, layers game, right? And if you have any big chunky bits, make sure that you go at an angle so that you can um, get all the way around them and they don't show blue. Okay, we'll go over here onto our letters. Okay, now it's time to peek. See what we got. Okay, oh, that looks perfect. A little bit of lightness here. Peeking is such a great way to assess before you peel off the tape. Lining your stencil back up can be kind of a pain. I even find it a pain and I do this for a living. That is not in my skill set. Okay, brush goes into the water. And now we switch to another dome brush and we're gonna to switch to black. With these brushes, um, you cannot change between strong colors and wash your brush out and then reload because then your brush will be wet and the wet is what will make that paint run. So you wanna make sure you're always using a dry brush, super important. What I do when I'm loading my brush, if you notice, I don't dip it right in. I kind of push it down and pull away. So that and then whirl off the excess. Okay, gonna take a little peek. I think one more coat. Since I've got a couple of coats on here and it's a little bit wet, instead of lifting off my paint, I'm gonna come down here and finish this and then I'll come back there and do another, another coat. Okay. And now it's time for the reveal. I'm not gonna put my brush inside the water because I think I might need it for the next step. But you always put your brush in water because if you leave them off to the side, the paint will dry in your bristles and it will wreck your brush. You can sometimes recover, but sometimes not, so better to just be safe. Okay, and then remove. And look how cute that already looks, so sweet. Okay, now what we want to make this look really old is we want some distressing. So I'm gonna hit the blow dryer 
If you are digging how crazy and groovy this project is, make sure that you give us a thumbs up and make sure that you share or make sure that you um, subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified for other really cool techniques. Okay, so now we're gonna sand right through everything. We want it to look gnarly. Okay, brush off. It's gonna be sweeping day for me over here. Okay, the technique for antiquing. And you have a lot of texture. I'm kind of working through this as I go. So we're gonna wipe off everything that we have on our brush for the black. And then we're gonna go into our corners, watch our sleeves. And we're just gonna do what I call dry brush or dry rub. We wanna make sure we get into the little areas where the where the thick texture is. If I go overboard and this looks a little too strong, what I can do is I can take my base color and I can go backwards just a little bit. So notice I'm working in the corners first and then walking it out with lighter pressure. And then I'm almost not doing anything but swooshing. And notice also that I'm not working on these corners with those corners next to me. I'm working across because this angle of my brush is going to work so that it tucks into the corner and it gives me an, an, the ability to lift and fade towards myself. Ta-da, I think we've got it. Okay, to seal this down, what you would do is you would use a Krylon 1311. Let me grab my can real quick. Krylon 1311 matte spray um, is just a wonderful product. We've been using this for 30 years. Um, anyway, you would lightly spray a couple of times over this and that is going to preserve um, your project nice and safely. And then you can also seal the backside as well. So now, let's take a look. Ta-da. Looks distressed, looks aged, it's perfect. Mm -hmm.